Good day folks, I'd like to show you how you could run a solar panel as an open loop system instead of the typical closed loop system that we normally do where it's just the cell feeding a battery in a closed loop. And by running it as an open loop we can introduce multiple systems of energy to take advantage of this and make the energy extraction process here as a whole much more efficient. So let me explain to you how this works. Basically, I summed it down into two separate versions, a daytime version and a nighttime version. So the daytime version will charge the 12 volt battery and self-sustain, and the nighttime version will do the same thing as well and also charge a 12 volt battery at night, but with some slight modifications, which I will show you. So to show you how the circuit works, I'm sorry I had to draw this because I know I'm not a good drawer, but I couldn't find any actual CAD simulation software that took into account the solar cell properties as a diode oscillator, either through the forward voltage or the reverse breakdown voltage. So either one or the other. So you probably heard the key word here is relaxation oscillator. So I'm going to take advantage of the solar cell itself to run it as a diode oscillator, relaxation oscillator. So really in short how this works here, how this whole thing starts is we have the solar cell here which will through the rectifier circuit here in the daytime at full light will give us our typical whatever the solar can give us with very little loss here back into the 12 volt battery as regular DC. But we have an additional system here where we've added a 3 volts voltage regulator. The reason it's 3 volts is because I'm just making these values up here because it's going to be fictional because every solar cell is going to have a different um, forward or reverse uh, brake voltage. So what happens is in the case of this system here, I'm taking advantage of the reverse breakdown voltage. So to find that out, you're going to have to use the, your cell on a voltmeter, put the voltmeter on the volts and feed a voltage in reverse on the solar panel and run it as a diode and start very low so you don't damage your cell at one and then go up to two and on and on like that until you read the voltage that'll be your reverse voltage. So you take a note of that, let's say it's 2.5 volts, well this is where we'd run a 3 volts regulate, uh, voltage regulator so that by the time the capacitor here charges slowly through the 1k resistor and reaches the brake voltage the reverse point of let's say 2.5 then it triggers the relaxation oscillator and that's where the now by doing this folks we get an AC cycle in the system so now we're introducing our open loop system and we're creating it with the help of the solar cell itself as a diode oscillator which started itself off so what's going to happen is we're going to pull a bit of a Bedini here where we're going to try and to capture every event we can in this open loop system. So we introduce a new L coil here in, in um, series with one of the AC sides of the oscillator action because there's two systems going on here. There's the regular DC going to the rectifier and the AC pulsing from the... Um, oscillations so both of them are being converted into this 12 volt battery but by adding an inducer coil here on one of the sides we're able to create another back EMF action like Bedini used to do from here and we have another rectifier and we could increase the amplitudes this way so this way here we could actually get you know 50 60 volt pulses coming back into the battery as an increased amplitude so we actually have three different systems here in play instead of just the simple boring one system when it's a closed loop and uh, the voltage regulator acts as a protection because we don't want to overload our cell because if you go too high over the breakdown voltage you're going to damage just like your regular diode folks so we have to take in consideration that it's going to work as a normal cell in the daytime and that could potentially damage if it were going to try and loop too much so the battery acts as a buffer and, the, and we are allowed to um, accumulate the charges like we normally would, like a normal solar. It's going to charge on top 
And this whole extra system may only need an additional 5% or less to run because this is a very low level input trigger. Again, we were talking about the input being very low to maintain the oscillation, but in this case it's such an efficient system because it's taking advantage of the solar as well. Now, at night this is not going to work very, very efficiently because what's going to happen if you keep the circuit the same when we eliminate one of the systems here we're not going to have enough voltage to charge the battery up so what's going to happen is we're going to end up using part of or maybe even if it's just five percent as a trigger but that's going to drain part of our battery because just off of half of one system we'll still get feedback but unless everything is perfectly tuned here it will most likely be a drain it's not impossible you could do it just with back EMF I have but typically speaking at night this system will eventually drain. So I have a slight modification to help that so that we can generate electricity in the daytime and at night. So usually on a closed boring loop system when the solar cell at night only produces a volt or two it's not enough to charge this 12 volt battery. But with a slight modification here we can make this all work very well at night. So I'm going to show you the modification right now. Alright folks, here's the nighttime version with those modifications. As you see, I made a few changes. So the cell now operates in reverse, so meaning it's as a traditionally connected, um, it's going to work in forward mode. So now we're only going to need about 0.6, depending of course what the solar panel is going to be, but typically it'll be around 0.6 forward voltage. So what's going to happen is our relaxation oscillator in this configuration is going to give us peak to peaks of around 0.6, maybe close to a volt if we're lucky. But you know what? That's all we need if we want to initiate a back EMF trigger in this L coil here. So even though we've eliminated the system here where the cell works as a regular cell to charge the 12 volt battery, um, it's We've eliminated that, but now we're using the cell at night time, even though it has maybe a volt or maybe close to. It's going to be more than enough because all we need in forward mode is about 0.6 volts. So the nighttime power to the rectifier is going to be more than enough to trigger the relaxation oscillator to provide a trigger, a low level nighttime trigger, so that even at the nighttime we might still get about 24 volt pulses of the backing EMF because again we're, we're not operating as a closed loop. We're still taking it, not as many systems as the daytime because now we've eliminated a big part of it which is the, the big solar energy, but even with a very dim we can still use it as a trigger to initialize these other systems here and then collect the energy from those systems at night. And as you see, the battery is not connected to the input no more because we've eliminated the voltage regulator because we don't need it because we're dealing with a much lower voltage uh, trigger for the night version for this to work now. So the battery is just running off of the back EMF charge from the L coil. This Relaxation oscillator is completely self-sustainable at night from the ambient low voltage 0.6 or so. It's going to be a little bit more to trigger it, but you know, uh, maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.8. But this is the concept again. So the way this would work for a continuous charge is to have the two systems side by side with a sort of flip-flop circuit on a light sensor, let's say, so that in the daytime you're running off the slight variation where the solar is also being utilized to dumb. Why, why waste it, right? Because we might as well use it in the daytime, but at night we don't want to end up using the battery to run the trigger, we want to charge at night as well. So with this modification it allows us to run our open loop systems. It won't be as efficient as the daytime because we're missing one unit of an external energy we're no longer really getting, but it doesn't stop us to take advantage of this of similar systems to trigger a charge with an energy we're not really paying for at night. If it's 5% more you get, it's 5% more. It's free, folks. you got to do whatever you can. So I hope you enjoy this and let me know in the comments and have a great day.